So today I'm going to take you on a quick walkthrough of the recruitment table templates in Google Sheets, and they have three currently available applicants, positions, and budget. And then I'm going to walk you through some tips and tricks on how to modify and use this for your own use. If you do not have tables yet in your Google Sheets, so in other words, you do not see tables here under insert, make sure to check out the link in the description below. So that way you can download this template and start using it in your own projects. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First of all, I'm gonna walk you through each of the three templates. They have applicants, positions, and budget. And then I'm gonna go back through and show you some of the cool features of tables, as well as how to modify this for your own use. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first one, which is called applicants. And so under applicants, we have these spark chips for names. And so if you have not used that, you just type in at, and then start typing their name or their email address, and then it'll turn into a smart chip that you can hover over and see some of their details and send them an email straight from there. Next, we have a drop down with the stage, and I'll show you later how to modify that. You can type in their role, select the team they'll be on, and then you can attach their resume as a file here. If they send it to you, you can just drop that link in here and convert it to a chip and it makes it nice and clean and you can just click on that to get to it. You can put in a name chip as well if you want to do that for the interviewer or I'll show you how to change that to text if you just want to type in their name. And then you can select the score that you want to give them and I'll show you later how to do the rating chip and then just a text one for notes. Next up is positions and so positions you can select a priority and then type in the position name. And again, select the team they'll be on. You can actually put it in a place tag here, which is kind of like maps. And so you could type in the address or you can just type in and put in uh, a place like this and then just tag it like that. You can select the status for that position, um, the post date, and how many days it's been posted and any notes for those positions as well. And then finally, we have budget. And so you can put in the position and then the current status for that position and the available budget as well as the start date and notes for that position. All right, so let's go ahead and circle back around. So one of the big cool features with tables is that they have this cool group by feature. And so this would be cool for recruitment because then you can group by stage as an example and see those neatly grouped in those places. And so if you're wondering what it looks like when you add some more, if we add some more chips here, for example, uh, we can add maybe a couple higher here as well uh, and interviewing. And then you see this little pop up here and it says refresh. So if we click refresh, what you'll notice is that those will pop up into the correct group just like that. So that's a pretty cool feature. Another thing you can do is you can add a filter. For example, if you don't want to see certain teams, um, you could unselect team three, for example. And then just kind of like filter views, if you've used those, you can save this view here. And we could say group by stage, or you could even say um, Peter's group by stage if you want to save it for yourself. And then you can either exit the view here or under this icon views, you can exit the view there and then it will go back to the normal view. And if you want to re-access that view, you can just go here, Peter's group by stage, and see it there again. And as always, you can modify this. And if you want to see that team three back again, um, and then X out again, just like that. So the next thing I want to show you real quick is how to use filters on these tables. And so if you're used to using filters from this create filter here, or create a filter here, and seeing those filter, headers there, this looks a little different. So you can filter again, still from here, um, using the filter column, and then you can see it there. So it just takes an extra click to get to that. Um, and you can also do the sort there as well. So it just takes an extra click for the filter, um, not probably a huge deal, but just in case you're trying to find that, that is where to find that. Now, inserting columns or rows. So columns is easy to insert, just right click on that column header, and then you can just insert a row there just like that. You can delete one. Um, if you add some data over here on the right hand side, if you go one more column over like this, it won't add it. But if you put it in the column next to the current table, it'll add it right there just like that. 
And so I'll show you a little bit more on column modification here in a moment. But let's look at adding new rows real quick. And so you can just add more rows like that. At the bottom, you can insert some just even in the middle like that. And you can see it kind of carries through those options. So next, let's look at the other cool feature of this, which is column types and show you how to modify this. So for example, in applicants, maybe you don't have the accessibility for having them as contacts. So maybe you just want to change this to text. And if so, just edit column type and go to text. And then you can just put in the applicant name like John Doe and not have to have his email address necessarily on the spot. Um, but keep in mind those smart chips do kind of contain their name and their email in one. So it may be handy to do that instead of doing applicant name and then maybe their contact in a separate one. Next is stage. We can add new dropdowns, modify any of the dropdowns if you click on it and then do edit button. And then you can see those options here. You can add more items if you like. Um, waiting for example uh, you can also change this to an arrow if you prefer arrows uh, and it changes it to that and if we go back we can change it back to chip if you prefer the chip style one thing to note is there used to be in normal data validation and it still is where you can not allow them to enter data that isn't in the drop down uh, for some reason that's not here on the table version so i'm not sure what the reasoning behind that was um, but just keep that in mind that you're not able to keep them um, from doing it. And it's going to give them this error, but they can still type it in. You can't force them not to be able to put that in. So let's look at the other column type options. So we have several different numbers. We have number, percent, and currency, um, which is pretty standard. Uh, text, which is what this is right now. Uh, date, and you can do date, date time, or time. Uh, drop down like we were just in. If I can get back to the here, uh, you can do check boxes just like this. And then you can do smart chips. And so I kind of explained the people one. You can also do files here, like I'll show you in the resume. And so you can do this and um, select a file there just like that. And then it gives you a link to that file. Um, let's go back here. And then uh, also under smart chips is finance, which typically what I've seen is for like stock prices and stuff like that. Um, and then place where you can put an address and it syncs to that place and, and it gives you a pop up for that. And then finally rating. And let's go ahead and actually add that over here. Um, this is probably a little more appropriate than their drop down. And so then you can put in these like that and it gives you a little more visual of their scoring if you like, um, or if you prefer a number, you could convert it to um, a number here like this and see it that way. Um, so it's kind of really up to you what, what works best for you. And then let's go back over here and we can change this to none as an example. Um, and then because I had this on checkboxes, it still has that false text in there, um, just like that. So lastly, uh, let me go back to uh, text here and then show you. So this placeholder, as you can see, all these have placeholders. And so you can actually remove the placeholders if you like just by unchecking that show placeholders. Um, and if it's a text one, it's going to show up based on whatever um, you enter in there. If you select, for example, a date, then it's gonna show up like that and so forth. So that's how those work, um, just like that. Let's go ahead and reset that to roll. And then that is all the column types. And then finally, what I want to do is show you how to reference tables in formulas, and then we'll wrap up this video. So we'll just do a quick sum here. Let's do a count A of, um, and we actually need to name this table first. So let me get it ahead of myself. Let's rename this table to applicants. And so when you name a table, you can't have a space in it give you an error there and you also can't have a number at the beginning so let me go ahead and get rid of this name at the end um, but we can put applicants there and then we can come over here and we can do count um, if I type in here count a and then start typing and it's kind of like a name range where you can select um, in this case this would be the whole table um, but we can also select a certain one and so we could do as an example stage here and see how many total we have. Uh, we could change this to unique and see 
what stages we have. So higher interviewing decision need no higher. And then we could do a count if based on that and do applicants and stage and then compare it to our A1 and come up with the number we have in each stage. And so when you use these tables and formulas, you use the table name as the first part and then you use the column name inside these brackets here. And so whatever the column names are, you can use and that makes it pretty slick and cool to be able to use it in that way. So that wraps up today's video. Hopefully that was helpful for you. If so, please like and subscribe. If you want to use some of the other templates, you can check out some of my other videos that I've been posting that also have links to those templates. So that way you can use them as well. As always, make sure to check out my other videos on both Google Sheets and AppScript, and I will see you soon.